a new location and a new sport for wheels as we go now to Essex for the 1991 Cycle Speedway World Masters from the Thurrock Circuit. 16 riders in this, the individual highlight of the Cycle Speedway season. Six of them seeded to the finals, the national champions of England, Australia, Holland, Ireland, Scotland and Wales. The other 10 have had to qualify earlier in the day from 48 other contenders, including the current Masters title holder, who was in fact eliminated. Cycle Speedway is well supported, very professionally run and very competitive. Thurrock used to be very, very fast. They've changed the surface over the past 12 months and uh, it's got a little bit slippery. It's a bit unpredictable, but anything can happen. I mean, we've all got five races. Somebody's got to win it at the end of the day. Keep fingers crossed. The 1991 Masters title turned out to be a fierce contest between two riders from the Midlands, Dave Hemsley and Mark Griffiths, both of whom had come through the qualifiers. Danny Zani from Ipswich started slowly but finished brilliantly. Also in there, Phil Pilbrow from Norwich, a former title holder and the oldest man in the contest. And Jason Pratt from Suffolk, who did well to qualify for the final. The other thing is that at the grid, I shall ask you to get yourselves ready. I shall then ask if all riders ready and put you under starters orders. Any movement after that? If it's a flyer, then I will exclude. If it is a what I regard as a nervous twitch, you, there will be a rerun. So I will allow a nervous twitch, but not a flyer. And that's basically all I've got to say to you. I wish you all the best. May the best man win. The rules of the sport are strictly administered, and the discipline is good. Here, each rider would have five races. Four laps a race, the points scoring a bit different from conventional speedway, four for the winner, three, two and one. If you're excluded for some sort of indiscretion, and there are plenty of tricks of the trade, you don't score at all. Traditionally, the Masters has been held every two years, alternating between England and Australia. In 1987, it was held in Norwich, when Martin Hepworth won the title. But the sport is expanding, and Holland now is a contender for some of the major events. In heat four, although the Australian Neil Toy was the most eye-catching rider in his fluorescent strip, this was to be the clash between the two main contenders. Dave Hemsley with Jason Pratt from Great Blakenham just beside him, then Neil Toy on grid three, and Mark Griffiths, 23 years old, who was third in last year's British Championship. Commentators, Dave Lanning, with, alongside him, Graham Sutton of the British Cycle Speedway Council. Hemsley's the interesting one. Look, most impressive in his qualifier. He's on the inside here. It's been a very advantageous draw. He fought All riders ready? Under the orders. Almost You're touched the, the silence. Orders. And away they go into the turn. And Hemsley, it is who does get away. And the Australian got a knock at the first corner. In second place, Mark Griffiths. In third place, it is Jason Pratt. So Hemsley, clean start. And he's pulling away here. And uh, Graham, this boy Hamsley looks impressive. He, he, he's, he's cruising and yet he seems to be gaining ground. He has a very deceptive rider with bags of speed and bags of confidence. He's only a young rider, just uh, in his early 20s, but he's certainly looking comfortable here. And I rate him as possibly the man most likely to uh, knock Hepworth off the top today. Well, he takes the four points in second place there. No trouble at all for Mark Griffiths. And in third place, it was Jason Pratt. But an impressive looking win from David Hemsley from Leicester. He takes the four points. And Hemsley won his next heat too. So he'd started the tournament well. In heat eight, Mark Griffiths on the inside was getting his second ride. So was Danny Zani, who'd come a disappointing fourth in his first heat. He's in grid three. You're under starters' orders. Off this time. Again, it is Griffiths. And again, Gale has come through very cleanly there on the inside of Simmons. And down there has gone Danny Zani, just trying to turn too swiftly. But it's Griffiths in front. Then we have Gale, and in third place it's Simmons. 
It was a clever piece of cornering as the runner on the inside, Mark Griffiths, got clear on lap one. Gale from the outside chose his moment. He's not going to catch him as they come into the last lap unless uh, Mark Griffiths from Wensfield does something extraordinarily silly. So four points for Griffiths, takes him up to seven, and that puts him up with the leaders. Second place was Gale, third place was seven. And Mark Griffiths won the next heat too, so things were going well for him. But what about Danny Zani? Another disappointment for him. Yeah, I was coming out the game for another drop down on the back straight here, and my pedal hit the, hit the um, shale and just went flying. See, when you get to this stage of a final, you've got to go all for the win every single race, you see. But uh, alas, it's not working for me today. Two points so far. Can you pick uh, up something? I'm going to go for every single race. Like I say, you can still finish on um, about 14 points, uh, 15 points if I win every single race. But that's, that's a long way out, long way out. <laughs> the leader unbeaten, David Hemsley from Leicester on the outside of Varnish. And Zani could be a spoiler here. Heat number 12, and this one could have a great bearing on the eventual destination of this title. There's the start, and it's uh, Zani has just as we rather imagine Zani with the pressure off, and here comes Hemsley down the inside, and that's a perfect piece of manoeuvring from the lad from Leicester, and Varnish is at the back. And uh, the moment was right there for Dave Hemsley. Now he's got to work very hard to get up on Zani. And we heard Zani uh, tell Stuart Jarrett that he's going to go for it, even though he's well down on points. And Hemsley has got a lot of work to do. Varnish has moved through into third place, just at the back as they come into the last lap. 85 metres. And Danny Zani with Hemsley. Now can Hemsley raise something extra around the last couple of turns? As they go over the line, it's just a wheel or so. Zani hanging on, but good cycle speedway. So with each of the 16 starters having completed now three rides, here is the leaderboard, and it is a bit tight. Mark Griffiths and Dave Hemsley, two Midlanders, are level on 11 points each, and then we have no less than four riders all tying up on nine points. That's Martin Hepworth, Pete Young, Jimmy Varnish, and the young East Anglian Jason Pratt in there with a shout. Mark Griffiths and Dave Hemsley, 12 heats gone. Level pegging, 11 points each. How difficult is it out there? It's a lot difficulter than earlier on in the round because of the track's been swept, so it's faster now. It's a lot faster than it was earlier. Dave, what about you? Yeah, I'm finding the tracks have actually suited me better now. Bit grip here and managing to pick up the points a bit easier. You've each had two wins and a second place. What's it going to be like over the last eight heats? Never. <laughs> yeah, you, you can never tell. Uh, a lot depends on what all the other riders are doing. There's a lot of tactical riding, so it's going to be difficult. Heat 14. Hemsley, we remind you, the joint leader has dropped one point so far. All riders ready? Watch for the big elbow from Simmons if he You're just gets a tyre's width into the first corner. Heat 14. <laughs> now he is away, and they all bunch up, and Hemsley just holds on to second place. And now he's going to go after Simmons, and this is going to be fascinating. It's going to be tactical because Simmons is in front, and he has eyes in the back of his head as Hemsley comes up under him, and it goes by him really cleanly there. And Gamble and Lloyd just getting together at the back there, and the Irishman has been relegated, but that was a most casual piece of overtaken almost by David Hemsley. We thought that Simmons would be obstructive. We thought that he'd counter the moves instead. Dave Hemsley just went sailing past on the inside and picks up four points. And he is really going to be in with a shout at this title now. Well, here is the pass, and we can see it uh, that, uh, well, there's a hole there, and Simmons could do nothing about holding back uh, Hemsley. And Hemsley went past and gained, and there was no catching him after that. The most impressive piece of overtaking, but uh, Simmons did leave a hole. Coming into heat number 15, and we do have an interesting equation here because we've got uh, Phil Pilbray on the inside, really out of contention on seven points. But then we have three Wensfield riders, Mark Griffiths on 11, Andy Palmer on five, Jimmy Varnish on nine. Now, Graham Sutton, the referee, Dave Hunting, is going to have to watch in case 
there are some team tactics and the, the Midlanders try to team up to get Griffiths clear and then protect him. Would that be a fair assessment? Yes, indeed. He is standing in front of them on the grid there, and I'm sure he's said something to them before they go to the tapes about team riding. They know that it's strictly forbidden in individual events, and uh, they're probably going to be riding for themselves anyway because Varnish and Griffiths both need points, so they're not going to be looking to do too many favours to each other. So an interesting racing prospect here. They insist on a cathedral silence All before the tapes ready? will go. You're under starter's orders. That's a tremendous start from Griffiths. He's away. Pilbrow is in second place coming hard. It is Varnish around the outside and Palmer down the inside. But uh, oh, the real battle there and uh, Pilbrow is brought down. It looked as though he just was helped on his way by Jimmy Varnish. But no doubting who is carving over heat number 15. Mark Griffiths absolutely flew from the start. And as they all battled behind him, it was the veteran Phil Pilbrow from the Eaton Club who came off worst. As they go into the last lap, it is now all over by the celebration. And Mark Griffiths is going to go into his last ride unless he does something untoward, which he's far too sensible. He doesn't do. Going in on level terms with Hemsley, and we're building up to quite a climax. Heat 16 then, Toy, Zani. Hepworth, Young, from the inside. You're under starter's orders. And this is a real pile up into the turn. And it's the Australian who gets clear as Zani and Hepworth look for each other. And Zani comes back down the inside there. And so two Young has come through. And they're swapping positions here. And over has gone Hepworth. And his chance must surely have gone now. Zani leads it, it really was from last to first and dazzling uh, passing in the round the first lap. But it is Danny Zani who is really proving himself to be a head waiter. He only scored two points in his first two outings as Young goes for it because he knows he's got to go for it. Young coming down the inside and he has just overcooked it. And uh, well, <laughs> that's unbelievable. Well, bike and rider must cross the line, and uh, I'm afraid Pete, wanting the three points desperately there, threw himself at the line, but uh, fell just short of it. Hard luck, Pete. Well, an incredible race, though. Well, let's look at that incident with Pete Young again with Graham Sutton. It's, it's exactly the same as the two previous falls. He's just trying to keep too tight a line coming out, and poor old Pete Young hits the dust, realises instantly that if he gets up and runs for the line, Bike and rider must cross the line, and of course, he just takes a tumble there as Toy and Hepworth take the points. It's just a tire width away. It must be agony for the lad. And coming into the last three heats, the leading contenders each had one ride left. Mark Griffiths and David Hemsley level on 15 points. Griffiths was the first to go. Heat 18. Griffiths and grid three must win here. He knows if he wins, it puts all the pressure on Dave Hemsley, who must come out in Heat 19. And so a win for the Midlander from Grid 3 will ensure him at least a runoff for the title. Heat 18 with all riders ready. everything to go for. Once again, all riders ready. You're under starter's orders. A long time starting, it was a flying start from Griffiths, but he gets the big elbow there from Lloyd, and there's trouble at the back with Young and Coenis, and now the referee is saying, keep going, and it's between Richard Young and Mark Griffiths, Richard Lloyd rather, and Mark Griffiths, and uh, well, we know this equation, and so too does Griffiths, but uh, Lloyd is going away. Griffiths looks like he is content to stay in second place, which means that Hemsley, his rival, will know. And here comes the last charge. No. Griffiths just has run out of steam, holds on for a second. Lloyd wins it. It's a desperate battle around the first two corners. And now all eyes on Dave Hemsley because a win in this next race, Heat 19, will give him the title of World Master 1991. Well, what's going through the mind of Mark Hepworth? We can tell you right now, he's thinking to himself, if I can win Heat 19, that will put me on 15 points and put me on 
with Rostrum in third place at uh, the very least. And there is Dave Hemsley from Leicester. Now he knows a race win can win him the title and a second place would put him into a runoff for the title with Griffiths. That is the exact equation. Aidy Gale in grid three has 11 points. So a win for him could also put him up in a shout for a place on the rostrum. And Phil Pilbrew, the old uh, veteran, we really shouldn't call him old, he's certainly not as old as me. He's on the outside and could always do something uh, extra special. Again. All riders ready? You're under starter's orders. And up to the corner, and it is Hepworth who gets away. And Hensley's in second place, although Gales are making life troublesome for him as they hit the pit corner. And down the inside there has come Phil Pilbrow, but uh, it is Hepworth up front. Second place is now Hemsley. Phil Brown is now coming to third place, and now what will happen around these last couple of laps? Will Hemsley go for it, or will he just sit in second place, knowing that will take him into a runoff with uh, Griffiths for the title? It looks as though he's going to be sensible, although he might just raise one last charge. I think not. Hepworth will win it. That shall give him third place overall. Hemsley will do enough. So Pilbrew is third, but we're going to have a runoff for the championship, well, and that is quite a fight. Number 19, well, here's the critical moment as the coin is tossed for gate positions. And the decision is that Hemsley won the toss and will take the inside. And, uh, well, Griffiths is the fast starter, and that makes life uh, just a little bit more difficult for him. So, for the critical moment of the day, the runoff for the 1991 World Masters title in Cycle Speedway. And uh, it's going to be surely the biggest moment in the career of either of these two lads. We've got uh, David Hemsley from Leicester, who most critically won the toss and chose the inside, and outside it is Mark Griffiths from Wensford, just across the Midlands. And Wensford. Griffiths is normally a very fast start of it, not quite so good from the back. He will need to get away, and if he gets ready? just a whisker, he'll come straight across. This start, You're probably the, the most critical in World Cycle Speedway in 1991. Hemsley inside. Griffiths outside, where will they go? And it is Hemsley, and Griffiths just didn't get the drop, and now Hemsley's in front. Now, what can Mark Griffiths do from the back? He is not renowned as a battler from behind. He's normally a starter. And Hemsley, when he gets in front, gets a good line and seems to go away. And that's precisely what he's doing here. Made the start. And now he is just two laps around his 85-meter purpose-built Thurrock National Cycle Speedway sensor track from the World Masters. And uh, this is the last lap. And uh, Griffiths has just lost it. And so David Hemsley from Leicester will become the World Master Coasting Home. Well, there are few who would date his qualifications for this title. He's looked really classy. He's won a long way when he's in front of there. He goes across. That's his fiance there. And uh, well, these are lovely moments, aren't they? And that's how the final placings looked then at the end of the championship, with Danny Zani of Ipswich winning his last race and pulling up to fourth place with three consecutive victories. But the title went to David Hemsley. Crucial for you to get that uh, toss of the coin for the gate position on the runner. Absolutely. I, uh, it was the most important thing. I was what decided it really. Just a toss of a coin. Look on the day. Mark Griffiths rode, had a fantastic day. He rode really well. And Danny Zani summed up the whole occasion for the sport. Yeah, good meeting, good atmosphere, lovely crowds, brilliant day. Ladies and gentlemen, I will give you the 1991 World Master of Cycle Speedway, Dave Hensley. So, David Hemsley of Leicester, the new Masters champion. And that's where we end our first look at the sport of cycle speedway.